Welcome everyone. I'm Elaine Korea, and I'm here to share with you some insights that I have received about uh, about working with, with the soul and my soul. And, and I would love to share with you some insights about how to access your soul because I have discovered that the soul is the most important part of who we are. And it's always expressing through us. So let me see if I can get my screen to share here. Oops, let's see. Okay. Uh, you can see that okay, Cindy? Yes, I can see oh, that. Perfect, thank you. So um, in this era that we're going through right now, it's really hard to know what's coming up next and where to turn or you know, how to have some sort of a sense of, of security and, and safety. I mean, things are just totally in chaos right now. So we struggle, it's, it's like we automatically struggle to try and maintain some sort of a semblance of, uh, of certainty or what is comfortable. And, you know, we seek, we seek something that's stable in our lives, especially with the more chaos that we have going on around us. So to weather the storm, it becomes important to find and connect with that inner part of us that is constant, that thrives no matter what is happening in this outer world. That part of us is our soul. And uh, this provides us a foundation and a support and a structure in, in so that we are unaffected by what's going on outside in the outer world. And we can connect with this and our soul will give us guidance so that we can thrive in these changing and chaotic times. So I'd love to introduce to you today the concept that you are a physical expression of your soul. That your soul is constantly expressing through you and so um, I would like to uh, also show you how your soul ex is expressing through you and how your birth charts actually help uh, to identify some of these pieces and help you understand more about yourself. So you're invited to bring uh, the magic powers of your, uh, you know, of your soul into your personal daily life. Okay, so what is your soul? The soul is it lives in a non-physical reality and in a different realm than our 3D physical world and generally can't be seen or uh, felt unless you can really see, you know, unless you can see auras or feel energy or sense energy fields. Um, it can be, you know, we can feel it though because, you know, it's always, it's always radiating from us. And in 1907, Duncan McDonald did some experiments and he proved that the soul actually has weight. It has some substance and it weighs 21 grams. So there are two basic theories about the soul. Uh, one is in Western religions, it has that the soul is in the body and takes the shape of the body. That um, in, in Genesis, it talks about how the Lord uh, God formed matter, you know, formed man from dust, and then he blew, uh, he, he breathed into the dust and, and breathed life into it. So generally speaking, the soul is considered to be what animates us. It was, it's the spirit that animates us. It's what brings us life. It brings us, makes us alive. So in other uh, uh, traditions, you know, the soul, or it's also called the Atman, was credited with the ability to enliven the body. And it's said by ancient anatomists, anatomists and philosophers that it's located in the lungs and the heart. And Descartes said it was in the pineal gland. So generally it is thought that the, live, the soul lives inside the body and takes the shape of the form that it's living. Now, the shaman and indigenous cultures believe that the soul expands around the body. We're sort of like in this big egg of energy and which, you know, would relate to the auras. And 
uh, you know, and that our soul essence is permeating our whole, the whole being of us, not only the physical, but the, all the other layers of it too. This essence of our soul permeates us and it's what animates us and lets us enjoy the lives that we're living. So the uh, indigenous people also believed that there was a soul in everything, you know, in the plants and the trees and the animals and the rocks and the planet in, in, in everything, everything had a, had a soul. And so, you know, that brought about a certain amount of respect for all life and all life forms. So, you know, there's, so you can, you know, take whichever way you want, but the bottom line is that our soul is what animates us and is what's expressing through us all of the time. So when you get an understanding of that, then you're able to um, just, you're, you're able to navigate life much more efficiently and have a lot more happier life. So our soul is basically a high vibrational state of love and light. And so that's, who we are at the very core of our beings. We are basically the divine in a physical expression. Okay. So why do you want to connect to your soul? I mean, what's so, what's such a big deal about it other than the fact that it's what's animating us and giving us life? Um, so this concept of the soul came home to me, oh, probably about a year ago when I started taking, uh, and practicing a pro uh, protocol that Tiffany, um, Tiffany Pollard, she teaches aroma acupoint. She had a, a protocol for using essential oils for working with um, and helping ground and dealing with energies of the world for empaths. And so one of the oils she used was vetiver. And vetiver, you take it and put a drop on your finger and you put, you know, you put it on the base, the soles of your feet uh, at the kidney one point, and um, and you do this little meditation. You do, you hold that point and you do this little meditation. Well, the thing about vetiver is it's one of those plants they use for stabilizing ground because it has such deep roots and it's a very sturdy grass. And so the meditations talked about taking and imagining these deep roots going into the earth to anchor us in our, you know, the physical form into this physical world. Well, it wasn't too long after that, that I had this bright idea that, well, these roots expand beyond this physical world and they go into all the realms of your soul. And so they actually are, are connected into our soul and through our roots, our soul essence comes into our physical form. And so we can, uh, you know, it helps us thrive and it nourishes us and it guides us in just being who we are. So, um, so that was one of my, you know, an interesting realization that I made. And so I've been playing with that concept ever since. And, uh, you know, I realized that my soul is my home and it provides me the foundation that I need. It, it's always there, no matter what's going on in the outer world, it's always there. It's always stable. And it gives me a structure and a form so that I can, um, navigate life a little easier and it gives me guidance on what's the best choices for me to do. So um, is we are not just a body, a mind, or emotions or spirit, you know, like the old, back in the 1800s, they had the separation of mind and spirit and body and all that stuff. We are composite of all these aspects. And it is the blending of these energies that makes us unique. Um, Yet at the same time, we are one energy with everything. We are all of the same energies. And so this is a paradox that we live with. How can we be separate, yet we are all one? So the real trick is when you master this paradox of uniqueness and oneness, then we've really mastered knowing how to be a spirit living in a human, as a human being, living in a human form. Is this all making sense to you? Kind of, kind of thing. <laughs> Waiting to hear more. Okay. Okay. So, how does the soul work through us? Well, um, 
probably is about 12 years or more ago, I studied with uh, Andrea Hess to do her soul realignment uh, program, which talked all about how to ac access the Akashic records and learn about uh, your soul's history and, and our soul traits. And so from this uh, accessing the Akashic record, which is also known as like the Hall of Records or the Temple of Records. It's where all the life experiences, I guess you could call them life experiences, of the soul are recorded. And, you know, the wisdom is there, the karma, the blocks, all the things that have happened at the soul level is recorded in, in your personal record in the Akashic record. And so when a person accesses that information, you have access to who is your soul family? What um, these are like energies of like mind, we'll say. They are working with kind of similar themes, like there's some star families that are spiritual teachers, and there's some star families that uh, like to improve on, the, on things, and there's some that are eternal optimists, and there's some that uh, are just, they're, they're the stabilizers. And so you've got certain star families that our souls are affiliated with or, you know, have, they're like our, they're like our family. We, we work together all the time. And then we also, each soul has a specific set of energy. I hesitate to use the word training, but it's, and it's not quite specialization, but it's, it's kind of both. It, it has an area where it, it, it specializes, that it, that it practices, that has got a lot of experience in. And, you know, and so these generally relate to the chakras, but they're, you know, they, they could be areas of like divine truth and divine power and divine wisdom and divine love and uh, divine order and communication. You know, there's different aspects that each soul has a certain strength in that they've used a lot. And this is what, this is the energy that is being applied and that comes through you. And so, um, so we've got that. And then from the Akashic records, you can learn uh, uh, about your spirit guides and what your life lessons are and how aligned you are with, you know, the divine energies. And, and then of course, if you take it even further, you can go and find out what is blocking you and what is restricting you, and, and you can clear those out. And so, um, so that is uh, one of the big things that you can learn from the Akashic Records. So um, let me see here, skipping over here. So your soul, you know, ex exper experiences life through our bodies, through the temple of our, of our bodies. And so we're all, you know, we're all tied together. You can't just have one without the other. So um, let's see. So how does this, how can you understand your soul, how it's expressing through your birth codes, through your birth charts? And so let's take, for example, you know, in, in the Akashic record, you find out, you know, who your soul, what your soul major themes are and this major energies that your soul is working with. But, you know, how do you take that and put it into physical life, into your reality, into your daily life? And that's where the birth codes and your birth charts can come in and give you some of the details, some of the bigger picture, the fine prints, you know, the fine details in the bigger picture. And so, um, for example, if your soul's dominant theme has to do with the urge to improve things, to find a way to make things better, and uh, your soul's dominant energy that it's working with is working with divine power, um, which divine power relates to freedom and responsibility and empowerment and self-sufficiency and independence. That's kind of the themes that go with divine power. Um, you know, it's like, well, how do you take and apply this into your daily life? So your birth charts help to define the details of your personality. You know, the life areas, the talents, the tools that you bring with you. 
they can supply the details of how you go about expressing your soul's desires and who your gifts are for. Contained within your elemental astrology and numerology and human design charts are the details that support your soul's essential themes. They either support them or they limit or just obstruct those themes, you know, simply for the experience that the soul wants to have. So once you understand these patterns, then you have a, you know, a better idea about how you express yourself and how you can do that more effectively and more powerfully. So one of the biggest benefits I've uh, heard from my clients about understanding these core soul energies is that it, it's very validating. A part of you already knows who you are. And, and, but we, you know, but people tell us we should be this way and we should do that. And, and we should act a certain way and we should do this career and we should have these relationships. And, you know, and society says that this is, you know, okay to do your have The relationship should look like this and your work should look like that. Well, the thing is, uh, you may or may not be designed to be that way. And, you know, and then there's other things that happen. Like you don't want to rock the boat because you don't want to deal with the displeasure of other people. So what happens is you end up hiding your soul's expression. You, you, you cover yourself up. You, you uh, make yourself so you're not very noticeable. You're kind of like in this very narrow little rut. So the people don't, so you look like you fit in. And the truth is you don't, but that's, you know, that's okay. So the thing about understanding um, the fact that you are a physical expression of your soul and your soul has certain themes that it is, it is passing through you. You radiate these energies, whether you want to admit it or not. And the more you try to hide it, they still come out. So it's just better to understand who they are. And then you can also realize that you are okay just the way you are and you are unique, and you are precious. So, just a second here. That wasn't my soul calling, that was somebody else. Once you connect with your divine nature, you have access to an inner guidance that helps you thrive, uh, bringing you the clarity you need to make for wise decisions, and the wisdom of how to use your vital forces and your vital forces, your energy, wisely, and the courage also to say no. If whatever it is that you're being offered doesn't align with your inner being. So the beauty of it is that you don't need to do anything special to live your soul's purpose. You're already, uh, your soul expressing into your, you know, you're already, your soul is already expressing into the outer world. It's just a matter of recognizing and connecting and aligning who you think you are with who you really are and you know as a divine being so all you have to do is be yourself and then you'll naturally create meaning and fulfillment in your life and you will also take actions that are in alignment with the essence of who you are so we are going to move on to i to help you understand how this works together, I'm going to have a couple of examples here. So here's one example. So in this particular person, the soul is designed to use divine power and divine wisdom to make things better. So you can, no, if I can, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so it, as you can see in the astrology chart, you know, this person has things very focused in one in one house, in one life area, and with the particular energies of Leo and fire. So, you know, passion, self-expression, um, leadership, creativity, you know, with childlike fun, all in the house of transformation. So it's like shining the light of what needs to be changed and and uh, with the ascendant that is in, in fire and Sagittarius about finding the truth of what needs to be changed so that uh, and, and finding a creative, fun way to do that. So, you know, so in numerology, 
the soul essence number is three, which is all about creativity. And so, and then the life purpose is four, which is about uh, structure and, and stability and loyalty and working hard. And, and the destiny number is the number six, which is about service. Um, interestingly enough, the, the mastery and the soul urge numbers are 11, which has to do with using your psychic abilities and, take, and having the courage to take the step into the unknown and stand on your own two feet. And the soul focus based on the letter the first vowel in the first in your first name is about freedom and communication. So, and then we'll just go over to the human design chart. So, in in this particular case, uh, you know, she, her her whole theme has to do with uh, the past and telling new stories about the past and let, and understanding the past has a gift. Letting go of the things that don't work. And taking those things that do work and moving forward, you know, into it. So by combining the whole theme here, we've got the soul that is using divine power and wisdom to make things better. So, okay, so she's got a lot of creativity and, and the theme of it is about transforming. So the idea that why could be that she is taking that the area that is being transformed is has to do with how to empower a person and to you know making things better and so and part of the empowerment has to do with understanding the past and dealing with the past and then rewriting and recreating a new story of the past so that is it, it is more empowering and more down to earth with you know following the the laws of divine wisdom, which has to do with universal laws, as opposed to uh, um, truth, which is more subjective. This the universal wisdom is 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 uh, uh, divine laws that apply to everything. So um, that's one example, and I have another example. So this person's soul is designed to bring divine love, and and her soul is is one of those stable souls they're stable as a north star and they bring stability especially to family and groups uh and, you know and so that's their theme their soul theme so uh, so she has her son in cancer her moon's in capricorn and her ascendant is in pisces so though pisces and cancer are both astrology signs that are very much about love Cancer is about loving, you know, family, familiar love, the, being the cosmic mother, and Pisces is more about being the humanitarian, uh, unconditionally loving, the Christ consciousness. So this this theme is being very supported. This divine love theme is being very supported. Now she has a soul essence of twenty three five, which five is all about change. But twenty three is the star of the lion, and that is. Um, it's like living life to the fullest. And if you look in her human design chart, she has the gate of struggle. So she's going to be really testing what is worth living. You know, what, you know, what, what has, what brings meaning to her life. And so, um, and her soul, her, her soul urge and her mastery numbers are also the number of 11, which is about using your psychic abilities and, and standing on your own two feet and stepping into into uh, the unknown with courage. And she also is about her soul focus. This lifetime is about freedom and communication. So if you go take a look at her human design chart, see if you, her son is in the gate 15, which is about humanitarian love. And she's also, her unconscious son is in the gate 25, which is about taking direction from spirit. And she's got the whole centering circuit from the sacral center on up around through gate 10 and all the way through 25 to 51. So she's got that whole centering circuit and that whole centering circuit has a big theme about self-love and love. And so it's like her mission here, the, her, 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 the personality and the tools that she brought with her into this lifetime is really a strong mission statement to support the divine love that she's here to you know, to teach people and demonstrate to people and show people what, you know, how to do this. And 
you know, the thing about this chart, it's, it's very challenging because um, not only does she have the gate of struggle, but, you know, it's, I, I know her. And so she struggles with this whole theme of, of caring about people. And, but then is she being selfish? But then on the other hand, it's automatic for her to stand up for herself. And so it's like, and she gets after people if they aren't get, taking care of themselves. So, I mean, it's like, you know, her real theme here is about teaching divine love or teaching how to love yourself. And, at the end, this, and so her soul is really expressing out through herself. I mean, this is like really clear. Whereas in this chart, it was the 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 expression of a divine power and wisdom can, the wisdom can come out in through storytelling that can be the theme of how of how these uh um this person can express you know that the, her soul can express the divine power her she's she's got a lot of intense energy too with all those planets of one in one house in the astrology chart that's like and a lot of fire there's like seven aspects in fire and so it's like there's a lot of passion here and since she's a projector she's got to figure out how to balance that and so that makes it very interesting so that just gives you a, a sampling of how you know of how the the soul can express into your physical form and how the birth charts can help kind of give you some clues uh, some guidance. Um, it just to kind of help firm, you know, for firm up so that you have a better idea of what you're, you know, who you here are here and what you're trying to do. And the thing about it is you have to be patient because it's like learning about yourself is like peeling an onion. You discover something new about yourself and, and then you say, oh, good. And then you realize, hey, there's a little bit more. There's a deeper interpretation about this. And so you say, oh, good. And then you find, you, you integrate that. And then you say, oh, there's this and this and this. And then you integrate that. And I mean, these are all aspects. So it takes time. So it's, this isn't something you do overnight. It's something that's a, it's a life process. Which, which makes life fun, which is why the soul is here, because it wants to experience things. And so, um, so I don't, do we have any questions coming up so far? Um, so far, people have been sharing something about their chart. Michelle had a question right at the very beginning. What was the um, doctor that discovered the way to the soul? Duncan, what oh, was his last name? Duncan McDougall. So, um, yeah, it was a study back in, in 1907. And I guess, I guess what he did was, uh, I mean, you know, it's kind of surprising that he figured this out so long ago, but, um, he made special equipment, weigh, may, um, weighing equipment. And when people died, he measured the difference between what, you know, while they were living and while they, when they had died, and there was, and that was 21 grams. It's hard to, I mean, that's a tiny little amount. You would hardly perceive it, but he figured it out and he published it in a journal. So, so yeah. And then other people on Facebook were just sharing their, like uh, Citrine said, she's a hermit opportunist, but you really didn't get into profiles that much. Two, no. four. Oh, uh, I just, I just barely touched the surface, but you, you know, with interpreting these, you know, just, I mean, there's, oh, there, there's so much more that I could have gone into with, with what well, was very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just love the way everything is. So some charts I've looked at and, and, you know, you've got the soul theme, like, like the second one, the soul theme and the chart just so flat on supports it all the way across the board. And then other charts, you know, I've looked at, and you've got the soul theme and you've got something right there that's that's like a challenge it's a roadblock and so it's like the challenge is okay how do you the soul express through this roadblock and still experience well the thing is the soul does really doesn't care how it gets to where it does it just wants the experience uh, so 
you know, but it's interesting because here it is, you've got this, this energy that's wanting to push through you all the time. It's always there. It's always, it's just who you boy are. We walk down the street and everybody can read our energy, even though we don't know it. And, and, uh, or maybe they aren't aware of it either, but you know, it's so, it's, so yeah, it's really interesting how the charts either support or they can put little obstacles in the way, or they can redirect that entry energy into a different way. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, I love doing this because it's, I never know what well, I'm going to find. And the three different ways. So uh, Coach Elaine says, how do you know what soul family you belong to? Is okay. it real? How, how do you know what soul family you belong to? Is it revealed in the Akashic records? Yes. Or is it something you can see through the human design chart or something else? No, I haven't, I haven't figured out if you can figure that out through the charts yet. I'm still, still uh, experimenting. But, but generally, to begin with, um, you go through, this, uh, through the uh, Akashic record. And so. I, do you want to take a couple more questions? Sure. Um, Donna Lee says on Facebook, I'm a reflector, four six, right angle cross of consciousness, and would love to know more how to relate to our changing times. Uh, 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 relate towards what? Our, cha our changing oh. times. Would knowing, you know, some of the things that you're showing, the en different energies in the charts that you're showing right now, help people to relate? That would. I mean, I, I come from the point of view that the more I know about myself, the more I can catch when I'm being triggered. And so, in fact, I just had one. I'm taking a, a, another soul realignment class on the vital energy, vital force energy. And I just had a real eye opener with that one because I was working through that. And, and it's like, so, 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 okay, I'll just, I'll just say what it is. So I found out that I am one of my major themes that is, is, it has to do with service. Okay. But the problem is I am expending too much energy in the area of service. So, okay. So how do you solve that? And so, of course, then, then part of the pro protocol is, well, where are you doing it? And who, with what, and how? But, um, but just by that understanding that I am expending too much energy by uh, being overly serviced, I mean, feeling obligated and feeling like um, guilty if I don't serve. And, you know, that, I mean, all these things that I felt, you know, it's like, you know, committed and, and, and well, obligation, guilty, obligation and guilt. Those are two really good ones. But, you know, once I understand that, then when I when then when a situation comes up and someone says, oh, you know, can you do this for me? And then I have a, I have a little check back in, in the back of my mind that says, okay, am I over serving or not? Is this Oh. you know, supportive or not. So when you know things about yourself, then you have a way to say, hmm, is this serving me or not? So it was kind of, I find that interesting knowing that you're a projector and that possibly <laughs> service came up in when you looked at your human design or your astrology chart, that service would be a, a main point of this, of what your soul came here to do. So interesting that through you said an Akashic record or a soul code, which is a different modality. Right. You found out that one of the lessons that you are to learn is you service, service, you want to be of service, but maybe you need to be more discerning. So it was a, right. and you could see that in all. So it was like a revelation to know, oh, I'm of too much service, which yeah. might be a projector thing, many projector yeah. things. <laughs> Well, and then also I've got, um, you know, the, the, the gate 50, which is all about being responsible and guilt, guilt if I don't take care of people. So there we go. So it's fascinating because when you got a theme, well, am I, am I in my numerology, the number six, which is my destiny career number, that's all about service and being the cosmic mother and taking care of everything. So it's really easy to burn out if you're overly serving. And, and then the other thing, 
is so yeah in these different charts you see where service can this theme of service when in its highest potential is a really powerful thing well, but on the part other, what what's that yeah i was gonna say on its highest potential people that is it's a wonderful archetypes right you have service but part of it is when you like you were saying when you find other awarenesses that bring to light that you have to be more discerning of the archetype right and and, yeah. and protect your energy um right. do you want to take another another question sure uh, okay how okay micah asks how did you get the numerology codes on the left under the astrology chart? Well, they're That's a calculation. Your, I mean, I'm sorry. It's one of your modalities that you yeah, use. Yeah, it's, it's just a calculation. Yeah, with the yeah with the numerology. Yeah, I do numerology too. I've got a numerology book too. So, but uh, yeah, and so so yeah, so I you know I just well, I love yeah I got the gate forty eight so I love studying. You know, my moon's in Aquarius in my astrology chart at the, you know, with the number 12, which is the number of the students. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just automatic that I love to study. And then, of course, I, you know, and part of my soul theme is about taking bits and pieces from all over the place and putting together, putting in them, them together in something new, creating something new out of bits and pieces from other places. And so, I guess... You know, so that's why I mean we're doing it automatically. We're doing our soul purpose automatically. We just we just haven't you know engaged the mind, the mind and the heart and the soul haven't all engaged because once we realize that what we are doing automatically, instinctively, and in, you know, it, I mean, putting aside you know emotion, e emotional instinct, but just from our heart, it's we're doing it. And it's just becoming, I guess, really what it is. It's like opening up our eyes and, and um, being able to see who we are and see give, that we're, all, we're doing it already. Or being able to give words to what you're already experiencing. Well, that's true, too. And that's where the validation part comes in, because um, it's like somebody might say, well, I've always loved to study, you know, uh, about animals or whatever it is and then you know then you find out that well this is all part of their design there are some soul groups that um that are more akin to or aligned with animals than than others or so and soul energy centers you know there's a there's a whole bunch i just barely touched the tip of the iceberg with these two sets of charts um, because there's so much that you can learn about yourself <laughs> and wow. yeah and it's very interesting that you take all these diverse things and meld them together. Um, I'm wondering, do you want another question or did you want to continue on and take questions um, towards the end? Yeah, let's let's go ahead. And I got a couple of, of uh, different practices I'd like to share with you. Um, and then we can take some more questions. So, um, so like I mentioned before, uh, the vetiver med meditation with the vetiver oil, essential oil, that was really an eye opener for me uh, to, because I've been dabbling with the soul of, for quite a while, for quite a few years and, you know, learning about it and the Akashic record and readings and stuff like that. Um, but this, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's like, okay, the soul is over there and I'm over here and we're not really quite connected, you know, but this connected me. And so, and there's more, how would you say more substance, more, more power? I just feel like I'm more complete by being more connect. The more I connect to my soul, the more complete I feel, if that makes any sense. But anyway, so what you do with the, med the vetiver is you take a drop of the, the essential oil and you put it on a fingertip. And then you take and you can rub your fingertips together. And then you put them on the base of your foot. There's a little kind of a little divot indent just behind the ball of your foot toward going towards your heel and that's the kidney one point and you just hold that there and then uh, you just take and imagine that you have deep roots going deep into the strong roots going deep into the earth and 
uh, you know, you breathe and just, it's like a meditation, just relax and enjoy the feeling. And then you can take, and you can imagine that these roots pass through this physical plane and into the other dimensions. And all this little fine network of roots connects into, you know, all, into all your soul essences, basically. And uh, then you, through this, these roots, your soul essence can communicate back into you, into your physical form. And so you can, you just enjoy this feeling for as long as you want. And then when you're done, you know, thank the vetiver oil. So uh, I'll, sh I'll share with you what little meditation or the little affirmation that I say, uh, say when I do this. And so I thank the vetiver for sharing their its divine wisdom with me. And I receive the vetiver divine wisdom into my being. And I thank vetiver for reminding me that I have deep roots that anchor me, anchor my physical form into this earth so that I am substantial. And these deep roots extend beyond this physical earth into the realms of my soul and can anchor me firmly into the essence of my soul. And my soul is my home and my foundation and provides me the support and the uh, nourishment that I need to thrive in this outer world. And my soul communicates through me to, through, communicates to me through my roots so that I am an expression of my soul in this physical world. I am my soul and my soul is me. So that's what I say. So I've been doing this for quite a while and I, it, it grounds me. It makes me feel more substantial. It kind of like all the stuff that's going on in the outer world kind of like says, separates it from, you know, it's like I can handle it. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good practice for me to do. So the other thing I want to share with you is about uh, a gratitude. Um, gratitude and appreciation have the effect of opening your heart. And when your heart is open, it's easier to feel your soul, hear the subtle, gentle messages of your soul, because the soul speaks in very quiet terms and so it's what I've you can do gratitude and appreciation all day long wherever you are it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter what's happening around you you can just be grateful for the smallest little things like you have something to eat or you have some coffee or you have a place to sit or or a job or whatever it is and, you know, and you can appreciate yourself and appreciate what you can do and appreciate that the sun is out or that you got a little bit of rain for your garden or, um, you know, that there's trees out or you're, you can appreciate your pets or, I mean, you can just appreciate anything. And, and when you appreciate that, like, raises your vibration. And so when your vibration is higher, the stuff going on in the outer world is not quite so oppressive and you're able to go through it with more calm, with a calmer state of mind and more presence. And it just makes life easier. So one thing I want to mention is that uh, as empaths, which I'm sure most of you are here that, that are listening to this, um, there is so much energy in the global consciousness right now because of all the COVID and the COVID economy and all the political stuff, all the stuff going on. There's a lot of energy and I'm sure you're feeling it all. All of you are feeling it to some degree or another. And this as empaths, we take this in and it's really important for us to be able to neutralize it so that we are not become angry and unhappy and fearful and all those things are floating around in the airwaves around us. And so um, one of the things that I've learned, I've been practicing this for a while too, is about body awareness. So pay attention because a lot of times, I mean, depending on how your intuition works, you may know 
that you're picking up something from somewhere. But most of the time, it's very subtle. It's like a, it's like a subtle pressure on you. It's like um, if you, it's like when you go from hot weather where it's, you know, the air is real light and, and free to really cold and damp and foggy where you can feel the, the, the moisture against your skin. It's, it's sort of that thing only you can't see it. But so the more you can ground yourself and the more gratitude and appreciation you can feel for yourself, and then also listening to your body to be able to understand when it is being affected because our body is, it's like a huge radar for one thing or a huge antenna. And the uh, other thing is that it's, it's, it's a lot smarter than our minds are. So what you can do is learn to listen to your body, learn to get in touch with your body and become more sensitive to how it is uh, relating to the world. So one thing I, you can do, one thing I've done, is you, you can start by just uh, breathing and letting yourself ground. You know, imagine your deep roots going in and anchoring to the earth. And then um, notice what you feel. Just notice. I mean, you have tension in your neck, your shoulders, your back, your legs, your hands, your throat. I mean, where is the energy not flowing smoothly? And then, uh, then if you want to start practicing using your body as a dowser, for dowsing, for getting information about what's going on, go ahead and do something like say something that's an untruth. Like I'm a woman, so I would say I'm a man. Or you'd say your name is something that's not. And then notice how you feel. Just breathe and notice how you feel. And notice if you have uh, tension someplace, something, you know, a constriction someplace. Um, does your energy stop flowing so smoothly? Do you feel more contracted? Now take and speak a truth. Like, I am a woman. My name is Elaine. And feel what your body does. Does it expand? Does energy flow? Do parts of your body relax? So these, this is something it takes a while to practice. And it takes a while to become sensitive to this. But pretty soon, you'll be able to tell what's, you know, use your body as a, as a dousing rod, as a pendulum, to be able to understand what's going on in your environment and, you, and know, okay, I'm picking up energies that are not mine. I can let them go or, you know, do some sort of a clearing effect to, to let them go. So I hope that makes sense to all of you. So um, I want to just let you know that it's, it's not what you do as much as who you are. So the more connected you are with your soul and your soul expresses through your heart, the less stress you have. Your soul essence, you know, is radiating from you all the time and it touches others and when you allow yourself your true essence to to radiate from you you are touching other people in a positive way and this is a way that you can bring peace and harmony to our world that is in such chaos right now we have to do it one person at a time and by raising our vibration and and letting that be transmitted so um Your soul will guide you to what physical actions to take. And, and then what you do, you know, that's what's fun. You're, you will do what is fun for you because your soul, it, it, it'll, it'll accept any experience. But generally speaking, the soul will guide you to what is most fulfilling. So any more questions? Um, I did have some from... Previous, I don't see. Uh, Gilletta on Facebook said, stuck on burnout and depression since three years. Committed myself to group therapy for three days a week, but I feel human design could help me reconnect to myself. Whereas therapy looks back to where it all went wrong. 
I want to look forward and take responsibility for my own life and find my true soul purpose. Do you mm-hmm. agree with that? Yeah, I do. I, I if therapy does go back and try to dig up all the, you know, the bad stuff, which there's a there is a value to that, but you know, you don't want to rehash what's there. You know, you want to know that that is in the past. And then you want to figure out how to take that what is in the past that you've learned. In other words, the gifts that you have learned from whatever it is and move ahead. And so, yeah, any of these modalities, the human design, anything, the more you understand about yourself and the, the more, see, part of the thing too is, is that when you're, when you've cut off from your soul, your because you, if you look at your soul as your life essence, if you cut off or restrict it, then you don't have the life force that helps you be healthy and vitality and, and have an optimistic point of view. And so you, understanding and opening up to your soul and to yourself will help. It'll help a lot. It'll help bring you new hope in life and, and, uh, you know, new meaning in life because a lot of depression has to do with not having meaning, not having something worth living for. Something else is taking your life force away from you. I mean, I mean, if you want to look at it strictly as energy, something has got more passion to live than you do. So, so yeah, so it's getting reclaiming your own passion. So yeah, any of these tools will help human design will help any of these tools will help. Um, She did say thank you for addressing my story. We had another question on Facebook. Do you think projectors need grounding more than other types? I'm a projector self projected authority. And She's also interested in doing the vetiver meditation. Oh, okay. Let me see. I'm trying to get this thing to stop sharing. It's gone. (laughs) We're here. There. We're good. There we go. Okay. Um, What was the first part of the question? (laughs) Do you think projectors need grounding grounding more than other types? Projectors have a challenge because we pick up everybody's energies. They're, they're, they're doing their life force energy. And so we need something to be able to be detached from that so we can get back into our own natural energetic flow. Are, you know, we, I, I guess you'd say projectors tend to move more in cycles, you know, we're out doing things, then we come back in and kind of like build up our energy again, then go back out and do something. So if we're always around um, a generator type, we never get that break. And so uh, grounding will help. But I think it's a little bit more that we need besides just grounding. Grounding will help. Um, keep us from flying all over the place. But I think what we really need is we have to have time to ourselves where we can sort of like chill out and let everybody go and and get back into our own personal rhythm. And more of that connecting to the soul, right? (laughs) Finding your connections to allowing your soul to express. Right. Um, On Facebook, and, and I know that you've heard this too, isn't Karen Parker saying that projectors are healing the world just by being? I think so. I think we're busy working on the invisible realms, you know, just, I, you know, I mean, when I first heard that, it made perfect sense because, I mean, I already, I already knew about the energy grids of the world. And then when she said that, it's like, yep, it made perfect sense. We're busy. And then when you go, <laughs> then when you go into the finer details of the soul blueprints, or, or the soul, uh, you know, profiles, some souls are actually designed. They were the ones that designed this whole earth blueprint that we are experiencing. And so they come back and, uh, you know, when they reincarnate, you know, they're here to patch the holes in the grid and fix the problems. And so there actually are soul types that do that work. But I think that um, generally speaking, I can see that the projectors, we no, get, I, 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 
I think we get, I think we get our energy from someplace else. That's just my opinion. But well, that's a cool opinion. Now, I just want to make sure when you're talking soul types, that's actually something that people would find out from like an Akashic record right. reading, correct? Right. right. Um, as types in human design, soul types, right. so many types that we can go. Maybe I should say soul families. That um, she said, thank you, Elaine. It was a helpful answer. But you just, um, uh, do you want uh, do you want to take another question or sure. do you have more? No, I'm, 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 I'm pretty well finished. Okay. Mega on Facebook says, I'm a 2-5 hermit heretic manifesting generator. How do I handle myself and my work in these challenging times? And what can I expect? Hmm. Okay. Um. I guess it would be helpful if I had a clue of what kind of work sh she's doing. I mean, oh. she doesn't have to say what she's doing, but I mean, kind of, you know, I mean, she office work or coaching work or own, does she have her own business versus? Well, I'm waiting to see if she'll um, post that, but let's, let's go general because okay. part of what you were giving us when you were, when you were giving us tools that would help us actually ground and then connect to the soul and wouldn't that help with a manifesting generator too that yeah you know, where you don't you have that. to necessarily because i know that you've worked through this one earlier but it's not necessarily what you do to bring the money in as much as it's connecting allowing you to connect to your soul so that you can right. You probably well, will express this better. So <laughs> the thing, the thing I under, uh, I because I've got some manifesting generator friends, and I think grounding would. Uh, uh, you, you, now I know Karen says you know manifesting generators can't slow down, but, um, but actually, if they do, like be a little more con, just a little more conscious of what they're doing. Maybe that's what it is, because it's like the ones I know now. One I know, she's she's a little more, a little more level-headed. The other ones I know are just like flitting all over the place, and they're going so fast that they're leaving a trail of the details that haven't gotten done. And so somebody has to go back and either point it out, or they just don't get done, or whatever. But if but if you can slow down, just this is just generally speaking, from my perspective as a projector, watching a manifesting generator. Um, if they can slow down just a tiny little bit so that they can focus just a tiny little bit. It doesn't mean they don't have to do multiple things. But just no, you can do all sorts of things. It's just, uh, um, it's just like maybe, maybe you have to make a little checklist or something of I mean, you know, what you haven't gotten done. And while you're multitasking, you have lots of lists or something. But just, just By the way, you know, she did post. She's a single mom okay. going a little all over the place okay yeah during these challenging times yeah so this has been tough it, it's been tricky because you know she's got to do homeschooling probably or you know home care and then plus trying to bring some money in to pay for all the bills so yeah it's it's i mean i mean a, a manifesting generator has the ability to be able to multitask these things very well but it can also be very tiring because maybe what I might suggest is for her to take a few minutes and actually try to jot down what is the most important things. And that way, instead of going 20 different places, maybe she can only go, you know, only go 10. And that will, that will make her life a lot better. It'll make it feel like it's, she's, you know, it's like you want to feel like you're in control. Okay, um, we're coming up at the top of the hour. I had two questions come in Okay. over in Zoom. One was, actually, I had three. <laughs> Lisa asked, I'm curious if, if you briefly describe your design, Elaine. Okay, which, which one? <laughs> and in my, um, my soul profile, I am... Uh, uh, and the serial, I, I'm in the Syrian family, which is all about if something can, it, 
if something can be made better, then it's, I want to make it better. So that's, that's the theme. It's always playing out. I tell you, it's always playing out. And so the other thing is my two energy centers are the divine, divine power and divine um, uh, wisdom, uh, primarily divine power, which, you know, I've been hiding from my power because it's like power is scary. You know, I don't want to be a powerful woman. I mean, things happen to powerful women. And so, so that's been a whole journey of coming out of the closet to become more powerful. Um, and so then, uh, and then, well, actually that first chart was actually my chart. So the numerology, you know, I'm, I'm a number three. So, you know, I'm highly creative. Um, the, uh, uh, my, my destiny, I had the tools I came in with is, is working, um, being able to work and loyalty and honesty and all those things. And then the, uh, destiny is about service. You know, the astrology is I'm a Leo and, and the transformation and, uh, and then the Lisa says, thanks. what's that? Lisa says, thank you. Yes. So um, yes, it's a very complex, you know, but yeah. It would probably take an hour to go full dip. Yeah, go back and look at that first chart and you'll see all the stuff. Okay. um, Two more questions. And I guess three. Okay. (laughs) Diane uh, on Zoom says, I'm a 6'2 emotional manifester with Sun in Leo and the 11th, the moon in Cancer in the 10th. Do you have any special advice or a message for manifestors? We've hit almost all the other types. <laughs> yeah, I know. Manifestors say, you know, they. I'm. I can see where a manifestor has a real challenge. So your son is in Leo. In in which house? Was it was eleventh? The eleventh house. That's about uh, um, friends and groups and networking and the future. It's ruled by Uranus. Um, and this, the moon was in the 10th? In, Correct, in Cancer. In Cancer. So that brings, the 10th house is your house of career. And so that brings a lot of sensitivity, uh, emotional intuition, a lot of emotional awareness and a lot of intuition into your career, into how you present, how people see you in the world, the kind of business that you do. And then the uh, sun in Leo is more about so, you know, you might be the, the with the, your groups and in your friends, you might be the one that's the leader of it or, or at least have leadership ideas or new creative ideas that are fun because Leo is also the, the, the little kid that likes to have fun. And then so, the, the manifester part is probably... The, man, the manifester part's interesting because, you know, you have the ability to just initiate things. But I can see that as a manifester... If you are doubting yourself, which Leo, the downside of Leo is if you're not getting um, the uh, attention or the recognition that you want, then you feel like there, you know, there, it, 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 it slows you down. It, it makes you doubt yourself. And so I don't know if you're experiencing that at all with with as a, as a manifester, if, you know, cause you have the ability to initiate and go for things, but if you, it's very easy to doubt yourself. I don't know if, if that's something that you've experienced or not. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you, depending on how, wondering, do you want the two more questions or do you want to wrap it up? We've already gone over the hour. I guess it's I, what, however works for you. I'm fine, but whatever works. Okay. For you. Well, uh, we'll take these last two questions, one from Ike and one from Coach Elaine. Okay. Ike asks, I'm a 5-1, one, a 1-5 one generator. I have a lot of six lines in my personality. My soul number is three. What's an important theme for me? Okay, you're 1-5. And uh, so, okay, so the one likes to explore, ex- research. The five is more like a cosmic mirror. So, uh, and the three is creativity uh, and expression. And it's actually an emotional number. It's part of the emotional triad. So self-expression. So this is interesting. Oh, this is an interesting thing because I can see how you get sort of wrapped up in a little loop here because you want to research and research and research, and then you want to express it. But then it depends on how the other people that are around you reflect it back to you. So 
this is a kind of an interesting dynamic that can happen. Um, but the basically, though, you're still wanting to express what it is that you have researched. And the trick is to not, um, uh, not let what other people think affect you. That's probably one of the biggest challenges with, um, with trying to live your sole purpose, for one thing. But the other thing, you know, as a three or whatever you are, because three is very, can be very vulnerable because here you are, you're expressing, you know, the heart of who you are. And uh, if you're, if, you know, if it doesn't go over well, which the five can, can, you can get blamed for things or you can, or people can really, or the other side of it, people can really support you. Um, you know, it, it, so yeah, it, the whole thing, thing about that is about self-expression. It's really important to be able to express, take what you've learned and be able to express it. So that's an important thing. Yeah. Okay, and then final question. How do we know what our energy centers are? Because you've been talking throughout about our energy centers. Okay, from the soul perspective, um, at, the soul, at the soul level, yeah, you have to go into the Akashic Record for that. And that's one of the things you can uh, learn from the Akashic Record is what is your strongest energy centers. So, and, yeah. so that's really something that they would have to have an Akashic, an Akashic Record reading. For. Right. Right. Okay. Now, yeah. is there the some a wrapping up thing? Um, sure. So, uh, after all, we've had so much fun talking. So, if you'd like to um, see a bigger picture of yourself and and experience some, you know, the integration of these different aspects of yourself, you're invited to uh, uh, contact me and get a soul purpose reading. I've got um, uh, right now. I've got it actually. Uh, at a discounted price on the human design store. Uh, just go to the human design store, click on vendors, uh, click on my store name, which is oh, the awakened heroine. And you'll see what I have, what I have there. So, um, so yeah, I just want to part with saying that your soul is your most important part of who you are. And uh, when you get to know it, you make choices and make choices with that align with it then you have the capacity to really enjoy your life. And so I just want to leave you with that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for letting me talk today. I really enjoyed it. And I hope I've given you some ideas. <laughs>